Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. I have a brand new mic, so I'm kind of testing all the kinks and stuff out, so if it sounds a bit wonky, I'm sorry. Um, you know how these things go, or at least I hope you do. It's kind of weird, it's like hanging off the desk, and it's like in my face, it's a big ass pop filter, oh my lord. But we're going to be talking about, what if Donald Trump just chose his primary challengers for his cabinet in 2016? And, you know, out of all the challengers, all of them fit, so... We're going to be doing Joe Biden in 2020 in the next video. Um, tell me, how would you put these pe guys? How would you rank them? Where would you put them? So let's move on. First off, with Secretary of State, we have Ted Cruz. His qualifications for being in this, first of all, we have the Committee on Foreign Relations. He was on, he was a, on the Subcommittee on Africa and Global Health Policy. That might work better for uh, the Health Department as well. He was on the subcommittee on Near East, South Asia, Central Asia, and Counterterrorism. That might work for uh, the Homeland Security. And he was also on the subcommittee on Western Hemisphere, Transnational Crime, Civilian Security, Democracy, Human Rights, and Global Women's Issues. Again, uh, you might see a little bit of Homeland Security, but all this does point to him having ex enough experience to be uh, Secretary of State. Going on to Tre Secretary of Treasury, we have John Kasich. He was the chair of the House Budget Committee when he was in the House of Representatives. Before that, he was a ranking member. So he's got experience dealing with the budget, and that's what the Treasury Department's all about, handling the budget. Going on to defense, we have Jim Gilmore. His qualifications that he served four, three years in the United States Army. This one was kind of eh for me, but... Uh, the, especially the ones I have for uh, Homeland Security and Veterans Affairs. I really had to stretch it. But, you know, like, per rules of this video I have set out, it's what I have to do. Going on to Attorney General, we have Chris Christie. He was the United States Attorney for the District of New Jersey. He specialized in securities law, appellate practice, election law, and government affairs. It was also George W. Bush's campaign lawyer for the state of New Jersey. A pretty solid choice for Attorney General, in my opinion. I think Trump should have picked Christie for Attorney General. That's just my humble opinion. Or more so should have picked him after he was done being governor of New Jersey since Jeff Sessions was already gone and done and out. Going on for the Secretary of the Interior, you have Bobby Jindal. Uh, him, another M, but he was on the House Committee on Resources, which kind of deals with the Interior Department. So I guess that counts. Going on to agriculture, we have Lindsey Graham. Um, I think I think you could also put him in defense since he served in the Mar Navy. Is either the Navy or the Marines? I could be wrong. But he was on the committee on agriculture, nutrition, and forestry. So you can also, if we had an environmental department, which we should, uh, he would be on that as well. He, you, he could also be on that. Going on to commerce, we have Jeb Bush. He was the Secretary of Commerce of Florida, so it's just a step up pretty much from being the Secretary of Commerce of Florida to being the United States Secretary of Commerce. Next we have Labor, and that's Marco Rubio. He was the chair of the Senate Small Business Committee, and he was also the chairman of the House Select Committee on Private Property Rights, which may or may not uh, deal with labor. But that's talking about the State House, not the United States House. He never served in the U.S. House. Going on to the Health Department, Rand Paul. Pretty much the second best choice out of everybody except Ben Carson, but we're not changing Ben Carson and Redick Perry from their um, original places because that's where Trump put them originally, and we're not changing that. He was a graduate of the Duke University School of Medicine. He's an ophthalmologist or an eye doctor. He was certified to practice medicine by the American Board of Ophthalmology. He's on the Committee of Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions, or the HELP Committee as it's called. Uh, he's, also, he's also on the Subcommittee of Children and Families, or the, he's also the chairman. He's the chairman of that subcommittee, which, good for him. He's also on the Subcommittee on Employment and Workplace Safety. Going on to the HUD department, Ben Carson, of course, he's already established. He would still be on this department. I would pr more preferably put him on the health department because he's a neurosurgeon. It only makes sense, but whatever. Also, fun fact, he was the first black person to ever... Um, be the Secretary of H Housing and Urban Development. So Donald Trump made a first there. Going on to transportation, we have Rick Santorum. He supported federal programs for education and transportation, and he's the Executive Director of the Senate Transportation Committee, so he does have some uh, knowledge of transportation there. Better than Pete Buttigieg, who I think his military background kind of helps him out with transportation, which good for him. Energy again, Rick Perry, not going to change that. Going on to education, we have Scott Walker. 
Uh, he supports abstinence-only sex education in public schools, proposed an increase in funding for fighting domestic violence, mental health care, higher education, and job training, and signed a law to fund evaluation of the reading skills of kindergartners. I think more so that was supposed to help kindergartners uh, be able to read more, uh, because kindergarten, you know, you want to teach your kids to read, which is important, uh, having our children read. Going on to Veterans Affairs, we have Mike Huckabee. Again, again, as I said, Veterans Affairs and Homeland Security, I had to stretch this. He argued for a larger military and increase in defense spending. You might want to put Huckabee in the State Department, possibly. I don't know. Uh, Huckabee and this last guy, uh, which you know, you know, you know if you already know this field. Like, literally didn't fit anywhere, so I had to, like, scrunch it up. And going on to Homeland Security, we have George Pataki. And I guess his qualification is, is he was the governor of New York during 9-11, so he's got, you know, experience when it comes to working, when it comes to homeland threats. And so, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Again, the next video will be the uh, Joe Biden cabinet, if it was only people he chose from his uh, primary, from the primary challengers. So, this is the chaotic one saying, peace, and go follow my Twitter, at chaoticpolitics.